Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. This time I want to talk to you about a subject that even though it's covered in elementary and middle school math classes, it seems to come up all the time in my data analytics and data science classes. And I'm guessing that if it bothers my students, it's probably bothering you too. And we can summarize that question as, what is an average? So let's take it from the top. If I have here my list equals 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, let's even say 60, and you know, what is the average of these numbers? And most of us learned at some point in our math classes that the average is equal to the sum divided by the length. And so in Python, I can express this as the sum of my list divided by the length of my list. And sure enough, that's 35, right? And what we're trying to get to is like, what's the point of the average? I'm trying to get one number that sort of describes the average, that describes all the numbers. How can I best understand them in just one number? Now you're never going to be able to do that, right? If you have a whole bunch of numbers, you can't really describe them in one number. But if you have to, if you want to, right? And, and so where do we see this all the time? We talk about average salaries. We talk about average uh, gas mileage on a car. We talk about average test scores. Um, and this makes a lot of sense when we're trying to understand Right? Is that neighborhood more expensive or less expensive than this other neighborhood? Well, let's look at the average house price. This makes a lot of sense. We can grasp a large bunch of data, a group of data, a set of data with one number. And I can do this in NumPy and in Pandas just as easily. I can say here, import NumPy as NP, import Pandas as PD, from Pandas import series and data frame. And now I can say s equals, let's do a series based on my list, right? And I've got that. And I can say s dot sum divided by s dot count. And that's going to give me 35 again. What is this doing? This is doing exactly what I just did with uh, uh, pure Python with a list, but I did it using two methods. So using the, you know, using the sum method and the count method, right? And count, which returns the number of non-nan values. So right here, none is nan, and so we're doing okay. I can, of course, also just say s dot mean, and mean is the fancier mathematical way of saying the kind of average we're talking about so far, right? The average you know, calculates the average we've discussed so far, and sure enough, it's going to give me 35. Okay, so far, so good. But is this really the only kind of average? Is this the only way that we can get a sense of what the values are? Well, what's wrong with this? What is wrong with this data set here? Well, nothing's wrong with the data set per se, and the mean does indeed describe all the numbers here, but it can be skewed very easily. Let's say, for example, I say s.lock of five equals 1,000. I've only changed one of the numbers, but that number is so, so different from the others that now when I say s dot mean, oh, that's a lot different, 191.6. Does that really represent this 191.6? Does it really represent the numbers that we have? I don't really think so. There's this old joke that I heard, oh, so many years ago that Bill Gates walks into a bar and on average, everyone in the bar is now a millionaire, right? Like that's true, but it's not really helpful. And so there's another kind of average known as the median. And the median basically means, the median means, haha, the median's idea is let's line up all the numbers from smallest to largest and let's take the middle number, right? So let's take, you know, the middle number um, such that half are lower than the median and half are greater than the median. And sure enough, if I now say s dot median, we get 35. Now, how did this work? Wait a second. Well, it said, okay, not 10, not 1,000, not 20, not 50. Oh, we have 30 and 40. And since there are two numbers here in the middle, it's just going to average them. That, it will get the mean of them. So the mean of 30 and 40 is 35. And I think we can agree that if I'm looking at this data set, which number describes this data better? I think 35 describes it better than 191.6. And so we see this all the time. I was just looking through some US government data sets. And when they talk about salaries, they don't talk about mean salary. They talk about median salary. They want to know 
what is the number that half of American workers are earning less than and half of American workers are learning, are earning more than? Because there are enough people who earn an awful lot that's going to skew things, that's going to change things around. So is it wrong to use the mean? No, it's not wrong. The mean and the median are both averages. They are just somewhat different ways of taking that same measurement. And I would say actually both of them together can be very, very useful. And indeed, when we say s.describe, if we use the describe method in, Py in, in Pandas, we will see that it gives us the mean, but it also gives us the median. And so you can see if the mean is much higher or much lower than the median, then you'll know that there's some very high values or some very low values that are skewing it. By contrast, if the mean and the median are pretty close to one another, like if I now say s.lock of 5 once again is 60, now I do an s.describe, and we'll see that the mean and the median are actually exactly the same. And that means that we have a pretty balanced data set that half are above the mean, half are below the mean. And by definition, of course, half are above the median, half are below the median. All right, so these are two different concepts and both are important. And depending on what your data set is, you'll wanna pay more attention to one or the other. But I think trying to pay attention to both is really what's gonna give you the best sense of what's going on with your data. Okay, I hope this was helpful and cleared up some questions you might have. If you have other questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You get me on Twitter, you get me on email, and don't forget that I also produce a free weekly newsletter, Better Developers, all about Python and software engineering. You're welcome to join me every week and learning more about Python. I will be back here soon with more videos. Keep the questions coming and see you again soon.